All right, so in the video today, a quick little follow-up on a video we did a while back on how to modify a $75 Harbor Freight engine stand and add a, the worm gear from a winch. Here's, actually you can see it's still got the sticker on it. Um, and you were, uh, enter, enter a worm gear uh, from a winch to give you the ability to uh, have a crank ability on your engine stand. So you can move it around and make it do whatever you want. Um, got a lot of really good results uh, from the video. A lot of people liked it. Uh, there were some, some uh, really good uh, comments and some banter back and forth on uh, what was good and what was bad about it. Um, some questions about it. And uh, I think a couple folks might even call bullshit on it. <laughs> but uh, it's real and it really does work. So uh, let's get started. I'll show you uh, the ins and outs, the pros and cons, and uh, answer some questions. One of the biggest problems here is um, the, the play between the, the worm gear and the spline gear here. You can see, once you get the engine on there, it, it moves a bit. And so what I did initially for that is I put some shims up underneath to try to get the worm gear up higher. Um, but uh, as I started using it, the paint wore off and uh, made a little bit more play in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put some more shims in there and we'll get this thing as tuned out as we can and show you exactly what it's, what's this possible of doing. Um, and I just want to kind of show you the pitfalls and some of the, the solutions. Um, one of the other things, or initially I just had this angle iron, it was just a, an L-shaped bracket. But uh, it was really clear to me when I first put it together that this metal is really crappy and uh, any kind of torque at all, downward pressure, and this would, this would deflect. And it was causing, again, more backlash between those two gear, those two gear teeth. Um, and so initially I put one uh, corner brace in here, but this metal was so soft that it would bend down here. So I put a second uh, corner brace in here. I cut this corner off and I went ahead and put it in there. Uh, so that will give me a lot more rigidity right in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shim that up and then uh, we'll see just how much we can get out of this. All right, so here you can see I've added another set of washers in there. Um, it really takes up the slack. It's nice and snug now. There's no play. and. One of the other things is uh, when you start off, you have these little these little um, bolts that go in and hold the uh, the screw in place, and it can handle one washer. But once you put two washers in, it doesn't get enough bite. You can see you don't want the bolts to come through. So um, what I ended up doing was putting another bolt on there with a with a jam nut. Um, and that way I can control how much bolt goes into the, uh, the housing here. And I can still get my spacing and then um, apply torque right here with the nut. Um, and that, that seemed to be the, the better solution for that. Uh, but just FYI, you know, when you first bolt this together, um, there's paint on it. There's all kinds of uh, other things. And, and as you start to use it, you'll get wear points up in, in the... Uh, there's no bearings right so as they start to wear it'll get a little floppy and so just be prepared to to have to shim it if you do this um, adding some shims in there will uh, adjust the distance between these these gears up in here um, and that that does the number so um, you know some of the adjustments uh, to go over real quick uh, you have to put some angles some angle braces in here to keep this piece of metal here from flexing uh, you have to do some shims and you'll have to manage the length of this bolt right here. Uh, one of the other things that uh, one of the commenters had commented was to add some grease. He was suggesting putting a greaser in there on the sleeve so you could push some grease in there. Um, uh, that, I did throw some grease in there to, to, to reduce some of the friction points. Uh, it helps, um, but I didn't put a greaser in there. Uh, it would just be messy. And I did throw some grease on the gear um, right in here uh, just to get an idea of 
um, you know, some of the wear points. You want to reduce wear so that you don't have to keep adjusting it. Um, and th those are really, that's really the only thing. Other than that, it works really great. Um, one of the other questions that people had was, um, I had welded, you can see the weld marks here, I had welded the sprocket in place. Um, and typically when you have one of these uh, engine stands, uh, the whole, this whole shaft would come out and you could mount this on the back of the engine. Then you just hoist it up and you slide it through a big old hole and it's a lot easier uh, from that perspective um, to mount that. Uh, I'm going to show you my solution here and um, you know, obviously, I think somebody else had said to make the sprocket to, so it could be removed and that's certainly something you could have done. There's plenty of room to put some bolt holes in here and you could have probably welded a, sol a solid piece in here. Getting that sprocket to remain round and concentric is kind of critical. So I don't know how well bolting it would have worked. Um, ultimately it might have it might have worked but uh, this was just uh, simpler for me to get it in place and tack it with a with a weld. Uh, but as far as mounting the engine let me show you uh, a really quick um, you know, for those of you who, who think it was difficult, it would be more difficult to mount the engine once once it's uh, it's static and you can't take the sprocket off. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how I solved that problem. Here we go. Hang on. All right. So um, I don't have an engine to demonstrate, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to do what I'm I'm going to consider a worst case scenario, something really out of balance, uh, to make it real easy to show how um, how you could mount an engine with a static engine stand just standing in place and that the, the sprocket being static is not really that much of a problem. So um, first of all, assuming that you have a cherry picker, in my case I used um, a, uh, um, a winch mounted in my roof, um, in the roof of my garage, um, all you really need to do is elevate whatever it is that you're going to bolt in so that you can you can match one bolt hole up. See, I've got one bolt in here. Once you get one bolt in there, um, then then you're you're all but done right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of finger tight this bolt in here. Okay. So assuming that the uh, that the the engine is a, is off kilter. And uh, you know the engine stand or whatever it is that or the the cherry pick or whatever it is that that you're using to to hoist the engine is um, is in a weird state. Once you have the one bolt in there, now you have a pivot point, right? You have one bolt in. You can actually use the advantage of the worm gear to now turn the engine. In this case, it's just this board, and get it to the point where you can. You can match up the next bolt into the hole. I don't know if you can see that from that camera angle right there. But uh, you just turn the gear to the point where it matches up. And then you're in. And then you finger tight that baby. And from there you have two pivot, you've, uh, you've, you've changed the pivot, you have now uh, two anchor points. And at this point, you can move the engine up and down, move it around, see how it's loose? Uh, and you can slide it around so that you can get other bolts to match up. And, and you can move these hands around and, and whatnot. It, it, it's really not that difficult to mount it with the, with the, uh, uh, with the, the sprocket uh, static like that. I know it's not what you're used to. <laughs> But for me, it's not what I'm used to because I have never actually worked on an engine with an engine stand. I've always put it uh, on, uh, you know, uh, milk crates or uh, made a wood uh, a wooden stand or something. Always made do without. But when I bought this engine stand, I figured um, I'm going to have some fun with it, uh, and that's what I did with that. So uh, let me give you a demonstration of uh, the strength of this worm gear and. Uh, uh, what what you can get out of it and, and and also one of the things that people have commented on is how do you keep it from spinning now that you've taken the the, um, the pin out and uh, and I'm going to show you that it doesn't spin on its own once you crank it into position uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these bolts up and then I'll change the camera angle 
All right, so what I've got here is a, a good test case um, to kind of prove the capabilities of the worm gear and uh, what the mechanical advantage does and to actually prove that um, once it's in place, it doesn't want to spin back and you don't have to worry about putting a pin in it to keep them from spinning. Um, so uh, what I've gotten to set up right over here is a, a six foot long uh, two by six. It's a very strong piece of wood. It's not gonna flex or anything. Um, I have a counterbalance over here. Uh, this is a 40 pound uh, dumbbell. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 20 pound dumbbell and put it in a bag at uh, one foot increments and, and show up and down uh, what the strength of the worm gear is and you know how it reacts and, and whatnot. Be able to show you basically what the strength of it is, what the mechanical advantage is. Uh, we can do the math afterwards. <laughs> I think I'll put the math in the description so you can get an idea of actually how much weight is being pulled. Um, but uh, okay, let's go ahead and do the demonstration and see what it comes out like. 20, foot, 20 pound weight goes in the bag. Moving the bag to the one foot mark. All right, there we go. No problems whatsoever. And just to demonstrate, if you have a very a slightly unbalanced engine, it does not actually want to right itself. The worm gear does not uh, uh, allow it to spin out of control and, and to regain its position. Let's sit this back down. You know, the 2x6 itself has a little bit of weight on it. Okay, we'll move this to 2 feet. Here we go. Start cranking on this. Oh, wrong way. Here we go. Alright, 2 foot mark. Not a problem. And again, no hands on. It's not trying to uh, control uncontrollably spin its way back down. It is a little easier to make it spin, but it's not uncontrolled. Let's move the 20 foot down to three feet. See how hard this gets. Again, not a problem. It cranks. If your engine is that far out of balance, you're uh, you're probably gonna be working in a dangerous situation anyway. Um, but uh, 20 times three, if it's just a one to three connection at this point, then we can we can assume that that is uh, uh, 60 pounds off center, plus whatever the weight of the two by six is. All right, let's move it down one more. Again, it did, it did not want to spin out of control uh, and, you know, right itself. Four feet. Oops. It is a little bit harder to pull, but it does pull. And once again, no hands-on. It's not trying to unravel itself. I think we're getting very close to actually tipping that 40-pound weight over there. Uh, but it's uh, very close to the limits of, uh, of what it can do. Um, the worm gear shows no signs of uh, slipping or, or popping. Um, and uh, all the weight is uh, uh, slid against the, the brass bearing on this side over here. All right, let's loosen this up. Going down. I don't know if we can get it at five feet. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Let me just make sure that it's in the camera frame. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're in the frame. A little harder to pull. That's it. That's the limit. That's as far as that will go. It's uh, uh, the, the gear over here. The gear is still engaged, but the, the spline that holds it on at the lever is uh, starting to stress. But um, that is uh, that's a pretty heavy weight. If you had a question about whether or not it could hold a V8, um, I think that that is. Uh, that's answered. If you had a question as to whether or not it would unspool and without a pin, I think that that question's answered. Uh, we answered the question about how easy it is or how difficult it is to mount the engine. I think by getting the one bolt in and having the ability to use that as a pivot point to get the next bolts uh, kind of proves that it's different, but still very doable. Um, but overall, uh, I, I really had a lot of fun with this project. And I've enjoyed uh, all the comments and the banter. Uh, and uh, if you have any, any other comments about this, please feel free. Make some comments. Uh, add some suggestions. Let's make a really good product for everyone to use. Again, $75 Harbor Freight engine stand and a $40 winch. And uh, you come away with something that if you were to buy a professional uh, a gear spun uh, um, engine stand it would be seven hundred dollars out of the manufactured uh, so there it's a lot lot less expensive solution um, that works uh, for just your average guy in a garage so that's all I have for today I hope you enjoyed the video if you haven't already please subscribe and comment have a good day